Hello class and welcome to section 9.4 and 9.5. Today we're going to go ahead and look at common logs and natural logs. The first thing we're going to do is be using our calculator. So if you don't have a calculator handy, please pause the video and go and get a calculator. Um, to use the calculator, we're going to evaluate each expression to four decimal places. So we need to figure out where on our calculator is the log button. Okay, so the log, it's spelt just like log. So we need to find that on our calculator. Um, some other buttons we are also going to use today as we're also going to be using the natural log so this is the log button the natural log and it's kind of odd but natural log they switch it around it's LN this stands for the natural log and then the other thing we're going to be using is the e to the x button okay so we are going to find these ones on our calculator and then we will just go ahead and evaluate so first things first if you have um, a scientific calculator. You can go ahead and see that your log and natural log buttons are listed here. Your e to the x button is listed right above your natural log button and it's a little bit hard to see on here but your e to the x is right above that natural log so that's where it is on the scientific calculator. On your inspire um, once again it gets a little hard to see um, but your log and your natural log they are right here um, next off to the left of the one and the four so in between there and then right below it is your e to the x button so we're going to be using those and then on the graphing calculator okay your log button is right here your natural log is right here and then your e to the x is right above your natural log so first things first is we want to calculate on our calculator what is log of 3. So in order to do this, all we need to do is type in, you go log, wherever it is on your calculator, of 3 and hit enter. And there's my answer. Um, the directions say to round each expression to four decimal places. So we're going to go ahead and do four decimal places. So if I'm looking at the one on my calculator and I round it to four decimal places. It says 0 0.47712. So here's my fourth decimal. I look at two, two tells me to stay the same. So my answer is 0 0.4771. Then on number two, it says log of 0 0.2. So I do the same thing. I type in log of 0 0.2 and I hit enter. And that gives me negative 0.6989. My fourth decimal is a 9. So I look to the fifth one to say, well, 7 tells me to round up, which would make this 10. So this becomes 0, and that rounds my 8 up to a 9. So my answer for example 2 is that this is negative 0.6990. Okay. What we're looking at here today is what we call the common log. It's a base 10 logarithm. Okay, so typically, our base 10 we would write here. Okay, so it's base 10, and so all it's saying is whenever it is a base 10, they don't write it, because that's the common log. We typically use base 10 for common logs. So those two things are equal. If you wanted to do base 3, we would write it, as we have in the past, as log base 3 of x. Okay. So whenever there is not a number, you can assume or know that this really is base 10. Okay, and your calculator uses the log button is base 10. Solve our calculators. All right, so let's go back. We have solved problems like this one. We had 3 to the x equals 27. And what I asked you to do was just think through it. Well, 3 to the first is 3. So I know that's not my answer. 3 to the second is 9. 3 to the third is 27. Well, so that means that x is equal to 3. Okay, We are not going to always be able to solve them nicely. There will not always be a perfect uh, value that will work for us. So we need to go ahead and solve those things using logs. Okay, So solving exponential equations. If both sides of an exponential equation cannot be easily written as powers of the same base, okay, you can solve, the, solve by taking the logarithm of each side. So like we just did, 3 to anything, does it, 3 to a whole number, does that give us 11? There wasn't anything on the previous slide, so this one I need to take log on both sides. So what I have is log of 3x will equal log of 11. 
remembering that whenever I take the log, that allows me to put the x down in front. So this is log of, so it's x log of 3 is equal to log of 11. And then to solve for x, I would have to divide by log of 3 because it's being multiplied to undo multiplication, I do division. So on my calculator, I would take log of 11 divided by log of 3. Okay, so x is approximately, I'll round this to four decimal places as well, I would do log of 11, be careful to make sure you end your parentheses, and then do log of 3, and that parentheses as well. And there's my answer, 2.81265. So that tells me to round up, so it's going to be 7 here instead of a 6. So x is approximately 2.1827. Okay, so there is example 3. Moving on to example 4. Once again, 6 to some whole number does not give me 42, so I would take log on both sides. Go ahead, bring that x down in front. So I have x log of 6 is equal to log of 42. I need to go ahead and divide by log of 6. So x is equal to log of 42 divided by log of 6. And if you type it in on your calculator, I'm not going to do it right now, but if you type it in, you will get 2.08. Six zero when you round correctly. So please make sure you do type it in your calculator to make sure you can get the correct answer. All right, so the next thing we're going to talk about are natural logs. We just got done talking about the common log. So the common log is when you use just log. Natural log is when you use the LN button. And it's funny because they switch around the N and the L for natural log. So it's LN is natural log on your calculator. And what they are is they're regular logs, but they are base E. So it's log base E um, is the same as natural log of 4. Okay, these two things mean the same. ln we typically use frequently. So log base E and ln are the same. So whenever it's base E, we use it. Um, biggest thing to know is that E is just a number. Okay, it's like pi. We use pi, but it's really 3.14159926. And E is also a variable, but it has a value. It's 2.71828, and it keeps going on and on and on. So E is an actual number. Um, it's a number that's typically used when we're talking about um, interest accumulating continuously. Okay. So let's go ahead and do a little more practice. Okay. So once again, natural logs. Natural logs on your calculator, LN. Okay, and E to the X buttons. So once again, I pointed out where they are, so we're going to go ahead and do these on my calculator. So we have E squared, and you should also do them on yours. E squared. So on here, you have to go second E, and to the second, so I hit enter. And I get 7.3891. Okay, so there's that one. Okay, e to the negative 0.13. Negative 1.3 and hit enter. I'm not going to write this one on my sheet, but you should write it um, down. But you should get 0.2725. Okay, then the next one that we want to do is a natural log. We want to pl tug it, plug in natural log of 4. Natural log of 4. I just hit the ln because natural log is ln, ln of 4. And if I round this to four decimal places, this 9 tells me to make it 3. So it's 1.3863. And the next one that I want us to do is ln of 0 0.05. So I would do ln of 0 0.05. And I would get negative 2.997. The 3 tells me I can keep the 7. So that's how you would type those in onto your calculator. All right, so we need to talk about graphically what does when you graph y equals e to the x look like. So we're talking about the natural base e, okay? And if I graph y equals e to the x, it looks very similar to y equals a b to the x, okay? The only difference is, okay, before when I did this, if I plugged in, I typically got my a value out. 
In this case, if I plug in 0, um, I'll still get my A value out, which in this case is 1. So if I plug in 0, 2, so we're ignoring this, into here, E to the 0, anything to the 0 is 1. So if I plug in 0, I will get out 1. So once again, I have that ordered pair 0, 1. And if I plug in 1, okay, E to the 1st, I get out E. And remember, that's approximately 2.7, okay, and it keeps going on and on and on. So you have that ordered pair as well. So it is graph very similar to y equals a b to the x. Okay. Biggest thing to remember is moving into uh, the, the natural log function. Okay. Well, the inverse to the natural base function is ln of x. Okay. And if you look, we have y equals e to the x graphed here. And remember, inverse is if we go across the line y equals x, we flip it around there is my natural log function. So we're going to be using e to the x and the natural log of x to undo each other. And to undo, we have to have inverses. So that means e to the x and ln of x are inverses. They undo each other. Okay. So let's go ahead and just write out an equivalent exponential or logarithmic equation. Okay. So looking at this one. Um, this one has e, so to undo e, I would do a natural log on both sides, okay? So this would be the natural log of e to the x is equal to natural log of 5. Biggest thing to remember is if they undo each other, okay, e and natural log, that means that they become 1, okay? So this means that this piece is 1 and my x comes down in front because that's what allows me to happen. So it's x times 1, so I have x is equal to natural log of 5. Okay, so there is my natural log of 5. That would be my equivalent. Okay, now for part b, if I want to get rid of my natural log, well, my undoing is e. So I would do base e. So it really means it's e to that power. Okay, so e and natural log once again they undo each other, so I have x is approximately e to the 0 0.6931. This would be my exponential form. Okay, so biggest thing is to remember our rule here that they undo each other. So let's go ahead, and we're going to do some solving. So remember to solve any equation, we must use inverse operations. Okay, so for instance, if we had... Two x equals four. We divide because two times x. So we undo. We do division to undo multiplication. If I have x squared equals nine, we would take the square root on each side because to undo a square, you use square roots. They're inverses. Um, with this one, log base three of x equals ten. We would put it into exponential form because logs and exponentials are inverses. So in this case, I put it into exponential by being 3 to the 10th equals x. So that's my inverse. So logs um, and exponentials, once again, are inverses. And our last one, since e to the x and natural log of x are inverses, we will use them to solve equations, just like we did on the other side. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at our example six here. Example six, so we need to solve it. So we're gonna solve it the typical way we've been solving things. I wanna get e to the x by itself, okay? Or e to the negative x in this case. So first things first, I would add seven. So I have five e to the negative x is equal to nine. Next step would be to divide by five. So e to the negative x is equal to 9 over 5. Well, if I want to solve it, whenever there's an e, I know that the inverse of e is natural log. So I would take natural log on both sides. That allows for my negative x to come down in front times natural log of e. Well, natural log of e is really just 1. So that's 1. So negative x times 1 gives me negative x is equal to natural log of 9 over 5. And my next step, if I want to get x by itself, I would divide by a negative 1. So x is equal to negative natural log of 9 over 5. 
And if you type that into your calculator, you get negative 0.5878. So make sure you type it in to make sure you get the correct answer when you type it in. Rounding to four decimals. Let's go ahead and look at example seven. Okay, once again, I want to get e to the x by itself, so the first thing I would do is subtract two. So I have three e to the x is equal to two. Then I would divide both sides by three. So I have e to the x is equal to two over three. And then lastly, to undo e, I take natural log on both sides. Natural log of e, that is one. So I have x equals natural log of two over three. I would type it in my calculator, natural log of two divided by three, and you should get negative 0 0.4055. So make sure you're typing it in to make sure you can get the correct answer. All right, number eight. Looking at this one, same idea. I want to get e to the negative x alone, so I would add nine to both sides. So I have four e to the negative x is equal to negative two plus nine is seven. Then I would go ahead and divide both sides by four. So I have e to the negative x is equal to seven over four. Then I would go ahead to get rid of e, okay, take natural log on both sides. That allows for my negative x to come down in front, and that's one. So I have negative x is equal to natural log of seven over four. Last step, divide by that negative one, because I just want x. So x is equal to negative natural log of seven over four. And if I type it into my calculator, I get negative 0.5596. So that is how you solve when base E is involved. Okay. The value of E came about because um, when you were cal calculating interest compounded continuously, okay, um, that value of E was always there. Okay. So when interest is compounded continuously, the amount A in an account after T years is found by using this formula. A equals P E to the RT. I always call it PERT. Okay, P e to the RT, pert. So P is the principal, so that's your starting amount. And R is the annual interest rate. Okay, remember E is just a number, so it will stay there. Um, key word that you will know to use pert is it says continuously. Whenever it says continuously, you know you're going to use this equation. Okay, so this one says, what is the balance after 10 years? So we have a, a suppose you deposit $1,000 in an account paying 2.5% annual interest, compounded continuously. So I know I'm going to use PERT, so my amount will equal, P is the principal or the starting amount, so $1,000, then it's E to the rate. So I put the rate as a decimal. So this would be 0.025. Okay, so 0 0.025, and then it says after 10 years, so that's T. Okay, so now I go and type it in my calculator, and we are talking about money, so whenever I'm talking about money, only round to two decimal places. So if I type it in, it's going to be 1,000 E, okay, 1,000, and remember E on the graph on the 84 is above ln, E to the 0 0.025 times 10. Okay. On my calculator, it automatically puts it up in the expo exponent, but in a, on your calculator, if it doesn't, you have to make sure you put that all in parentheses. And then I go ahead and hit enter. Okay, so it's going to be after 10 years, I'll have $1,284, and then I round to two decimals and three cents, okay, because it's money. So I have $1,284.03. So that means that after over two years, sorry, over 10 years, I gained $284.03. Okay. Then the next question says, how long will it take for the balance in your account to reach at least $1,500? We want to reach it. So that's my amount. So that's going to go in for A. Okay. So I have $1,500 is equal to my principal. 1,000 e to the rate, 0 0.025, and it says how long, so we don't know the time, t. So I need to solve this. 
First thing is I want to get the e to whatever alone. So I would divide both sides by 1,000. 1,500 divided by 1,000 is going to give me 1.5 e to the, sorry, 1.5 equals. equals my e to the point 0, 0.025 t. Now, if I want to get my x, my variables out of the exponent, I would have to take natural log on both sides. So I have natural log of 1.5 is equal to, natural log of e, those cancel. So I have point 0, 0.025 t. And then to get t by itself, I would divide by point 0.025. So t is equal to natural log of 1.5 divided by 0 0.025. So on your calculator, you would type natural log of 1.5 and the parenthesis divided by 0 0.025 and hit enter. And you would get 16 point and four decimals is fine, 2186. So T is approximately 16.2186, and this is in terms of years. All right, so that is the last question that we have on the note sheet, so we're going to go ahead and stop there. Um, if you have any questions on this, please go ahead and write them down and ask me. Biggest to rem thing to remember is that E and natural log are inverses. Natural log. They're inverses and so they undo each other. They undo each other like addition and subtraction undo each other. Multiplying and dividing undo each other. So make sure you keep that in mind because um, E and natural log will be used a lot um, as you go through math. So if you have questions, once again, if you have any problems finding anything on your calculator, please come and ask me. Otherwise, have a great day, and I will see you later.